Hello, it's Thursday and it's Cheryl and I on Facebook with tips and tips, tips and you're always good. Well, I can't get my tongue around. Tips and tricks for broadcasters. That's a good start. Hello, Cheryl. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm just uh, been on a, a weekend in Dublin. First time I've been to uh, to Dublin. So I'll talk about that in a moment. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's uh, currently raining here in the mid-Atlantic states, and it's 50 degrees, so I'm happy. It's like kind of warm, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, things are going really well. Uh, uh, busy, busy with my shows, and just really excited to share tips and tools with broadcasters today because I know we have a lot of great stuff going on, and I'm so excited to hear what you learned in Dublin. I mean, you were a guest. I mean, Facebook invited you there, correct? Right. Let's, let's, let's go there first. That's Facebook Gather. I'm going to put this on the screen. It's on the screen. Good. <laughs> I had fun earlier yesterday. Um, Facebook Gather takes place once a year, and it takes place in the UK and in Europe. And Facebook invite 350 businesses to come over for three days at the event, uh, which is perfectly managed by Facebook. And you're given a flight over, which Facebook pay for. You're given a hotel to stay at, which Facebook pay for. So it's off to a good start. And that's before anything's happened. You're in Dublin and the world is good and you can enjoy a pint of Guinness and uh, <laughs> relax before. Well, that's where you go there. That's one of the reasons to go there. That's where Guinness, I guess is, so. actually, that's where right. Guinness is actually brewed. Uh, so the first test to Guinness was good. And then the following day, um, the Monday, uh, was the day of the, um, well, it was at Croke Park, which is famous for Gaelic football. It's the home of Gaelic football. If you've not heard of Gaelic football, not a problem, neither had I. Well, not in recent memory anyway. It's a national sport of Ireland. And we were honoured to actually be in Croke Park which Facebook had decked out for the uh, gather occasion. There were balloons everywhere and everything was immaculately set up. And uh, I have my trusted, let's go full screen for a moment. I brought back my show guide, the day guide for Facebook gather. And that gave us opportunity to actually see what was happening during the day. The morning of Monday morning was actually uh, guest speakers. And there were guest speakers from Facebook, from their technical department. That's the people who look after Messenger and Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram. And they told us about what the future is going to be. I'll come back to that in a moment. Then we had an Irish politician talking about the political situation as regards the UK and uh, the world. Uh, that was most interesting because I've only ever heard it before from people in, in the UK. This was the first time a European country had actually given their view of what we're doing at the moment. And then we had uh, demonstrations by marketing people um, of Facebook. And then two rows of chairs in front of the stage were empty. Okay. And you notice yeah. this, when, when 16 people came walking into the room, and one of them was Cheryl Sandberg who is the chief ex operations officer of Facebook. She's been in that position since 2009. She's seen the staff at Facebook uh, go from, well, it's increased 800% since 2009. And she is very high in the pecking order, close to Mark Zuckerberg. And she gave an overview of what Facebook are looking for and to achieve in this year. She apologized as well, and I'll put this apology out publicly. Uh, she apologized for everything that happened in 2018. And we're talking about fake news here. We're talking about things that Facebook themselves did wrong. She put her hand up and said, we've made mistakes. We fully own up to those. Uh, and as far as the fake news is concerned, we're going to hire a thousand people who will join our staff in Dublin. And it's with their job, their sole job, to make sure that anything that shouldn't be on Facebook doesn't get to Facebook or if wow. it does it's only there for a few seconds so right. they're going to be very proactive in cleaning the, the feeds that we see every day so we shouldn't be seeing political uh, news which is 
for want of a better word, uh, a lie. We shouldn't be seeing people attacking each other uh, because that's not good. And in the UK, we won't be seeing adverts which are actually scams. I'll come back to that as well. So oh, yeah, I was going to say, what, what's that? But you'll come back to it. Okay. Yeah, come back. Now, basically, they're... Uh, Facebook are looking at several areas this year to actually promote and help people with. The reason for gathering 350 business people together is to actually tell them what's going to happen this year and then for us to go out and spread the word. So that's what I'm doing now. Facebook are concentrating on Facebook Messenger, Facebook business pages, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and bots as well are in there and that's their that's what they're pushing this year they want us to help us to get the best out of the systems and in order to do that they had um throughout the croke park stadium they had stands which were manned by facebook staff and they would answer your questions so you could ask questions on instagram you could ask questions on whatsapp you could ask questions on messenger you could ask questions about mobile video and then tools that you can actually use and in, in the book that i took away as many links which I'll share over the coming days. But the, th the thing was that you, you got the feeling that Facebook were mega interested in what we're doing and that they're interested in the live video. They're interested in everything that's going on on Facebook and they're becoming proactive about it. So I do know that they're starting to interview people about uh, the Facebook experiences. I have so, a question. Can, can I ask yeah. a question? I don't, I don't, okay. I know you'll be able to find your way back to where you were, but you mentioned that one of the things they said was a, f a focus on business pages. Yeah. And so, so focus on uh, Facebook pages. And that really made me perk up because, you know, last year, and I guess, well, the year before and last year, we heard so much. There were so many people out there talking about, you know, your, your business page isn't going anywhere, post on your profile, you know, all of this stuff. And um, so the fact that they're putting a focus on business pages, I want to know more about that because I do post to my business page. That is where I promote anything that I'm doing with my business, which is the way it is supposed to be on Facebook. Anything business-wise is to be promoted in that area. But do you know what I'm talking about, how all those mm -hmm. people were doing – they were doing yep. talks about social media, be, trying to be social media gurus or something and talking about post on your profile, post on your profile, not your business page. And I never, I never did that, but nope. so can it, you maybe talk a little bit about that? Well, in, in, in terms of, of that question, we're both on the same page because if you post on your profile, then the only people who can actually see what you're doing are your friends. So you're selling to your friends. And if you go public, you might be selling to friends of friends. But the thing is, you're not actually building up a business. You're actually mm -hmm. working off your personal profile. And uh, we were asked a question in the Belivers group last week. And the answer is, no, you can't sell on your personal profile. No, you can't. It says, it, it says, it says in black and white, uh, the personal profile is for your use. It, you can't do business on it. Now, sharing content on that is good. but actually trying to do business and market on your personal profile you may get a complaint and if you get a complaint you could you lose your profile so it's just not worth it oh, exactly it, yeah and it, but in, my in question is is the whole thing with business business pages and what kind of focus are they putting there are they actually going to allow things to go out more on business pages i guess is my question ah and i can't answer that yet I'll mm. tell you why and tell you why I might be able to soon. Um, but their concentration on business and promoting business and helping business, I totally believe. Um, whilst I was at Croke Park on the uh, Monday, uh, in the afternoon, you could go to four different uh, training sessions. I went to the first training session. That was good because that was all about Messenger. And then the, the second uh, part of it, I said, right, OK, I'm going to go over to the Messenger stand and I'm going to have a look at them about uh, messenger so i did and the young lady on the stand there uh listened to what i said i talked about live video hub that's a, a given obviously talked about a live video hub talked about live cross posting and basically that uh, last may live cross posting was brilliant and it changed my life which is totally true 
And I asked about uh, a messenger bot, um, which I'm using today, but I just wanted to make sure Facebook were happy with it and they are. So I asked all about uh, Facebook Messenger and bots and uh, showed a live video hub and explained exactly what it was. And I got an answer to my question. So I was happy and I told RJ, Facebook are okay with the bot. So that means that RJ and I can talk about it and actually work on it. Because um, if you hear it from Facebook and Facebook are happy, then it makes yes. you sort of more relaxed about it. Yes, in the evening, absolutely. In the, yeah. But this is the this is the kicker for me. This made my weekend. Uh, in the evening, there was a reception for 350 businesses in um, a ballroom. Call it a ballroom. Then you can visualize what it is. At the front of the stage were uh, a group who were playing played all night. Fantastic music. There's a video on my page. But after an hour of uh, drinking from a free bar. Guinness, of course. Um, <laughs> basically, of course. of course it was Guinness. <laughs> basically, uh, there's a tap on my shoulder. And uh, I turned and uh, he said, my name's Wade and I'm from Facebook. And I look after the marketing of small to medium businesses on Facebook from, from where I am in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and could you tell me about the live video hub? Well, could I tell him about the live video hub? Of course I could. <laughs> so I told him about the live video hub and um, about the shows that we do this each week. I only got to Tuesday, uh, which was the show I do with uh, I Live Here with Fonz. And then somebody else joined the conversation. But at the end of the conversation, uh, I said, let's keep in touch. Okay, because I want to talk more about the live video hub, about live cross posting, about business pages in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we connected on Facebook. So Wade and I are now connected on Facebook. We're going to move the story forward. And I'm going to find out firsthand how Facebook are actually going to help with business pages in the coming months and how they're going to help businesses. So that was the most wonderful thing that happened uh, over the three days. We actually have a, a contact high up at Facebook uh, who I can talk to and ask questions of and Very progress. Good progressed not only just for myself but for everybody who 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 knows and wants to know um before we went there um my friend mike turner and organized 55 of us into a facebook messenger chat so we all got to know each other before we went we all talked whilst we were there so real world networking took place everything that facebook did was perfect and we really enjoyed ourselves the hotel was superb the food was brilliant so all in all, an amazing weekend. You know, you get those moments in life that you're going to remember 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. This this is definitely one of them. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Facebook. And uh, anytime wants, anybody wants me to talk about Facebook, I'm more than willing to do so in good terms because it was just an awesome weekend. So um, how about with Instagram? Can you tell us anything? What's going on with Instagram and where the focus is? Oh, this is not going well. I didn't attend the Instagram session. Okay, all right. I can, and get, I can get you some notes from it. Okay. How about yeah. WhatsApp? Did you in, uh, attend anything for WhatsApp? No. 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 Okay. All right. So it was I, all I, Facebook I, and Messenger. Yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll get the information. I'll pass it on to everybody. And uh, and Clara is saying hi to us, and Alfredo saying hi to us. Yeah, it was it was brilliant, and. Uh, when we got back, Mike set up a, a Facebook group for us. Uh, hello to Alfredo, he's just dropping in. The second week at work. Clara's saying hello. And uh, brilliant. Okay. Yeah, so it, it was a, an amazing networking experience and one I should remember. Now, you, you had quite an experience this week yourself. And that brings us to our main <laughs> topic of the show today, yeah. which is producing as a show host. Yes, Tom, we're going to be talking about producing because this is something that Stephen and I both do for people out there that want to go live and maybe they're, um, you know, a little bit apprehensive about it because they've not gone live. They've not used a live platform. And so uh, they want a little bit of hand holding. And so, you know, Stephen does this on his own. I do this on my own as well. You know, we will produce shows for people hold their hands for a couple shows and then 
you know, help them to move on their own, or maybe they want to have the show produced. And, you know, then we just do that because they just want to host the show. I also do things, and I think you do as well, Stephen. Um, I do things where I host and produce when people are really a little bit shy. I mean, I have a I have a salon here in my area that I will do that for once a month. We, mm-hmm. we go on and I host and, you know, bring on the esthetician and, and help her because it's all new. You know, she's not done this before. And so it, it's, a, it's a little bit easier when you have someone there with you on the show that will guide you and lead you through the actual show and make sure that you hit the points that you want to hit. And so that that is really um, one thing I wanted to hit on, too, for people who are new, uh, because that really does help. You know, one one of the things that happened in one of our shows that I did with the salon is uh, I think it was actually the very first one. And she was very nervous. And um, and so as as we were moving through the show, I was you know getting her comfortable and feeling at ease. Hi, Teresa. How are you doing? And um, and she was talking about a specific situation that she wanted to discuss. And right in the middle of it, she froze. And I could see the look. And I'm sure you've had that happen to Stephen. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. she froze. I could see the look on her face where she could not find the word. And so I immediately just, you know, came in and, and started discussing uh, where I knew she wanted to go. And it, it, it re, you know, revitalized her. She grabbed the word and was able to continue. <sighs> But it was seamless. And, and it's those yep. type of things, because when they know that you are really there to catch them when things like that happen, if you're not just producing, you're actually hosting with them. That's it just really helps to build their confidence. What do you think of that? I, don't, yeah, I totally agree. And it's very important. Um, I know that we produce shows, but one of the, the most problematic shows is when you're producing a show on your own and you run out of words because you're producing the show there's nobody to help you and it's down to somebody who's watching the show to jump in now that's happened to me last june and you got the same in a show where you have more than one person on screen and somebody does run out of words and you've got to be in there and help because what you're trying to do as producer of the show is to make sure that the show flows Mm -hmm. now it doesn't matter what's happening behind the scenes it's like the swan, isn't it? It looked calm and serene on the surface, but paddling quickly underneath, and you don't see the paddling bit. And that's what a producer of a show does. Producer of a show makes sure that you as a viewer only see what you're supposed to see most of the time. Yes, no? <laughs> exactly. And, and the, the thing is that there is no, there's no such thing as a smooth running show, is there? No, it's but then it, it's it's all about going with the flow of what's happening and being able to adapt to it. And yes, you're correct. I did have that situation happen this week, and um, it was almost like a perfect storm behind the scenes. Oh yeah, and and um, you know to be able to maneuver and um, make things happen, and to to be able to see a show then that doesn't show any of the chaos that was happening. And I don't know if I want to use the word chaos or not, but chaos does happen around us often and we need to stay calm and centered. And that's it because it doesn't matter what kind of storm is going on around us. If we stay calm and centered, we're going to sail through and move through and be able to think on our feet. And that's it right there is with producing is being able to think on your feet because I love what you said about um, I, this I had the analogy of the duck on the pond. What you yeah. were saying, because the you know when the or the swan or whatever when they're swimming mm. across the pond, it's so smooth and and you know you you can't see what's going on underneath, which their their little feet are just pedaling <laughs> and pedaling. <laughs> yeah, and everything's smooth on the surface. They just glide right across the water, and that is what we're talking about. In, indeed, and producing a show is a challenge, but it's also fun, and you it get the same, you you still get the same sense of ex, same sense of excitement producing a show as you do actually appearing on camera. Um, the other thing is, uh, Claire is saying, can you make a side biz with producing shows for others? The answer to that is, as as, as uh, Charles said earlier, is a lot of people who just want to go on camera and they don't want to be 
have to deal with the images, the sharing, the comments, everything that is part of a, a good show. And for that reason alone, yes, there, there are opportunities to actually produce shows for other people. And we know we do it ourselves and we know the people who do it. And yes, it is possible to actually earn money from it. And uh, it is a way you, if you focused on that and you put set out your store to be a producer of shows, I think it's possible, Charles. Absolutely. Well, I think I think it's happening more and more because um, when I talk to people about what I'm doing, you know, they're like, wow, yes, that that would really help me. And one of the things that I think is a great benefit in how I present, you know, producing a show for someone who's new is by saying, you know, let's we'll do this for like four weeks. You know, like they may do a show once a week. Let's do this for four weeks and I will help you. If their goal is to transition into producing the show themselves, then what I'm doing is I'm producing a show for them for four weeks and I'm also putting them in school, putting them in a class and teaching them, yeah. you know, that's part of that whole package of, you know, because their goal is to be able to do it themselves. And I love that goal, you know, that people want to have that hand holding it first and then step into doing it themselves. I mean, giving, giving support at the beginning is important because when you go going live and it's, it's the first time, few times you've done it, then your self-confidence needs a boost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as a producer, you can do that. Uh, you can do that before the show by making sure that they look good on camera. That's a, a start. So the yes. audio is right and the video is right. Then when you bring them on camera, you can keep in contact with them through the, the chat. And you can actually, you can determine which direction the show takes. Now, this, this comes to a very important point as producer. We as producers have got to do something very, very important. And I'm just trying to find it because uh, we have, and this there, got it. Okay. We have to follow the conversation that's taking place on camera. Mm -hmm. So we watch the show in the same way as you're watching it now. And we take our cues from what is said by the people who are actually hosting and co-hosting the show. And we put pictures on screen. We share the screen. We take people on and off screen at the direction of the people hosting the show. And it's very important that it's something that evolves over time. You get to uh, recognize people's tell signs so that when we're hosting for certain people, we can tell from the way they say something that something is supposed to happen. All we have to do is remember what. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And now, Stephen, let me ask you really quickly. Um, I know that you produce a lot of shows, but are you um, are you doing what I was talking about? Oh, thank. Oh, you're welcome, Clara. Anytime. Great to see you, Clara. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, like what I'm doing with the like the, the example I used the one of the salons that's in my area. Um, yeah. Are you doing anything like that? As far like I have a um, I have a another business that's a hearth and patio shop that I do that for as well, where I host. Like I get on there and I'm like, you know, it's Thursday at noon yeah. and it's la 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 time. And, you yeah. know, and, and and then I bring the guys on that are at the hearth shop and, and I'm like, well, we're going to talk about this today. And and I, I walk them through so that they're comfortable doing the live show. So and I don't yeah. not only produce, but I'm actually hosting. Are you doing that as well? I I do that. I haven't done anything this year because I've been but I've done in the past hosted shows for people um, being on camera, not being on camera. But I think, uh, I mean, we're doing that on the shows that you do on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. I'm doing it all week. Um, yes. But we, we do that on every single show. I mean, the, you can tell the difference. If, if we lead a show and not, so not being, if we lead a show, it will flow from beginning to end and there won't be any, uh, stop to the show part way through it won't stop it will just flow and that's the gift that we've got in that we can keep people talking yes and the conversation will never stop because we've always got something we can throw into the conversation from our own experience which will actually move it forward and because exactly. we can do, because we can do that 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 makes it easier 
for the people who are appearing on the show with us. I noticed, um, I, I watched a show, I'm not going to name it, okay, a show that I normally host. And I watched the replay, and it, every so often there was a pause. And then another pause. And I thought, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> no, can't do that. Your conversation has to flow. Uh, so I noticed that I wasn't there, but that, that the, sh the show was great. I really enjoyed it. But you just notice these these things, um, and that only comes from experience of actually producing shows. So if you're hiring a producer, it should be somebody who's doing shows on their own and doing shows with other people. They they've got to. I mean, we we can give people a library of hundreds of videos which we've hosted, co-hosted, starred in, been a guest on, and that's our CV as far as producing shows is concerned. Your CV, if you're looking to produce future shows, is show people the ones you've done so far. And if you're very daring, show them one for two, from two years ago and say, that's how I started, and <laughs> then this is where I am now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, um... And that's so funny when I first I, I, that reminds me of my very very first live live video on Facebook and uh, I've shared the story before but I'll make it brief uh, the I camera know. didn't work the the camera didn't work <laughs> it, it would not hook up and and um, so I just you know what the sh I'm, I'm doing this and I just went ahead and it was all audio and that's the way it turned out that was my very first live <laughs> well there isn't it's difficult to do a show when everything goes right uh, it's not going to happen ever ever we're going to but that's part of the beauty of going live this is not pre-rehearsed we didn't before the show i said to you we had a chat and we i just sent you one sentence which said we'll talk about producing a show and that's all we did there is no real agenda because we've not that one out we're talking from experience of producing shows and uh that's when you when you know that you've got two people who, who uh, respect each other, understand each other. You can do a show without a script. But if you're producing a show for somebody, yes. you've got to have a script, haven't you? Otherwise, mm -hmm. yes, chaos. Yes, if if you're if if what you're doing is is straight producing, absolutely, you have to have a script because you know, like the situation that I was in this past week. If I would not have had that script, you know. Um, basically, I was out of out of touch with everybody. I, I couldn't I could not communicate, and I had to do what I needed to do to make sure that show flowed properly, even though I was not in communication with any of the hosts. And it it happened, and we we did it, and we worked through it, and it was great. But once again, like I was saying, you have to be able to stay calm in the middle of that storm. And, and do what you know you need to do to move forward and that script and and it was not only the script helping me that script helped me help them because of the situation that happened uh, closer to the end that the main host lost contact and so it, it was another host that is not normally used to closing out a show or anything like that and so I had to without being in communication, be able to throw things up on the screen to help them to know what they needed to do next. So it was a great experience. Well, I, I watched the replay of the show and it was seamless. And you could see you could see where the glitches occurred, but the show just continued. And that's that's basically what we're aiming for in every show. In in shows like that where we host and there, there isn't a script then you've got to listen very closely to what's happening. You've got to watch out for technical problems. I mean, on the show this morning, uh, people froze. And when somebody freezes on screen, you, you, you don't sit there for five minutes thinking they're going to come back because they aren't. You take them off screen and then people know just to carry on without that person until they're refreshed and come back. And it's you're actually controlling the show and how the show looks when it goes out. I mean, there is one eye which is actually on the camera. Hello, camera. And the other Hello. eye is, watch, is watching <laughs> what's going out to Facebook and what's coming on the comments. Now, if, if I wasn't on screen, I could control the comments of the show. I can bring up images on screen. Just a moment. 
Uh, it's all be done so that the image is properly displayed. Okay, and then I can take the image off again. But I've got total control in uh, everything, even though I'm not on screen. And the key to that is basically get to know your hosts and co-hosts, try and get a script from them, failing that, listen intently, and use your own good judgment, which is exactly what happened on Tuesday, Cheryl. So kudos yes. for that. That's now, uh, Claire is saying, if you're honest to your viewer, the things that are obviously going wrong technically, they were forgiving because they know you're just, you are live. Just keep going. That is sound advice, isn't it? It's very good advice. Thank you so much, Clara. So true. Because, you know, and, and just like what happened on, on the show that we're discussing, you know, the flow happened, people knew what was going on and they were commenting that, you know, they were having a good time, you know, the way, the way the other two hosts picked up and, and started talking about different things and the, the, uh, um, the community, the audience that was watching were commenting and they are having a great time. And that's when, you know, it's, it's the, you're in the flow and it's still happening. It's moving smoothly. All right. And do we want to give a shout out to one of the co-hosts? Sure. If you would like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I, I, as I say, I watched the replay and I just like to give a shout out for Anita. Uh, whilst all was falling around her and Cheryl was in total control of what was going on. Anita held the show together, especially, uh, well, the parts where two co-hosts disappeared. So, the ability to do that is not given to all of us. So I just like to say that you are a natural broadcaster, Anita, and I look forward to your appearing on more shows. In fact, I go so far as to say that you should have your own show. Yes, That's she me. did a fantastic job. I agree with you. Ditto on that. Absolutely, Anita. Fantastic. On that note, uh, because it's nice to end on a note where we appreciate some difficult the, the skills that they brought to broadcasting on TV, and also because we're getting close to you your next show is, is close by isn't it John? yes my next show is in 30 minutes well less than 30 minutes yes messages of the heart and uh that is coming on at 11 o'clock eastern time so please drop in and say hi if you're out there i will i promise i will be there and i'll say hello the one thing I love about the, the live video community is that we all support each other. We watch each other's shows. We, we cheer for each other. We support each other and answer all the questions. That is just brilliant. Long may it continue. If you've got any questions about producing a show or you'd like a show produced, then contact Cheryl or myself, and we'll be happy to help and give advice. You get advice as well in the Belivers group. And as tradition on the show, uh, it's Cheryl. Over to you, Cheryl, and uh, to close the show. Oh, thank you so much. This was a great show. Went so fast. I cannot believe that it is after 1030 already. Um, but thank you so much, everyone who has joined us live, everyone who's joining on the replay. We appreciate you because we know that you're busy and you could spend your time doing anything. And we appreciate that you have interest in tools and tips for broadcasters this is a new show for Stephen and I, and we're really excited to move forward with it and helping out broadcasters. Have a wonderful week, and we will see everyone next Thursday. Bye.